Week 13, Day 1. What is the very best thing about teaching character? The best thing about teaching character is no matter who you teach it to, there are accountability partners. If, you're, if you have a class of 20 kids or if you have a, a football team or if you have, a, no matter what you're teaching, is they're going to hold you accountable. You can't teach positive mental attitude and then go out and be negative. <laughs> They'll hold you accountable to it. So it, it was a great benefit, and it is a great benefit for anybody that teaches it. Now, I can't stress enough that this is not an unrealistic, idealistic character curriculum. You have to work at it. You don't learn character. Character is not poured into you. Character is pulled out of you. But you have to work at it. Mondays, every Monday, we do goals. And goals are very simple to make you a purpose-driven individual. If you spend all your time doing nothing, you become like the processionary caterpillar just going around and around in circle. What killed them was they had no direction. They had no purpose. To become a purpose-driven individual, you have to sit down and say, okay, today I'm going to do get this done. Every day I'm going to write, sit down and write what I'm going to get done. Now, the idea of morale, in order to have high morale, you have to feel like you've accomplished something. If an athletic team is to have high morale, when the practice is over, every single individual has to leave that practice field feeling like they accomplished something. What did you do in practice today? Nothing. I didn't do anything. I just stood around the whole day. Well, what happens to that individual is they lose their morale. Then it infiltrates. It's like a cancer. Morale is either contagious one way or the other. Same thing here. You're going to become purpose-driven, and it becomes just a habit with you. In other words, I'm going to make this a habit of every day I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write down three things that I'm going to get done. Now, you may be further ahead than I give you credit for. You may have something that you're looking forward to six months down the road. In other words, you may have said, I'm going to run a 5K in June of next year. That's awesome. That, that's an unbelievable goal. And then you've set some plans, some benchmarks along the way in order for you to get to that point. I'm going to lose 35 pounds. You're not going to lose 35 pounds today. If you're going to lose 35 pounds, you have to set a date in the future. And you go one day at a time. Maybe I lose a pound today. Or maybe I lose a pound in the next three days. The slower you take it off, the slower it's going to come back on. The quicker you take it off, the quicker it comes back on. Believe me, I can attest to that from uh, 70 years of trying to lose weight. The purpose-driven individual is going to sit down and write down what they're going to get done today. Now, the second a character trait that we discussed or that we were trying to develop is one called commitment. And there are so many people today that are committed to nothing. Well, commitment seemly, seem, simply means I'm going to make a plan. I'm not going to just write down a goal. If all I do is write the goal down, that's a dream. You're a dreamer. <clears throat> it doesn't mean you're going to accomplish anything. If you put a plan with it, I mean a detailed plan, then you're going to get there. If you're going to go from five from the couch to 5K, as one individual told me they were going to do, then they're going to go out each day and they're going to jog three minutes. And then they're going to walk three minutes. And then they're going to jog. And then next week they're going to jog three and a half minutes. They're going to have a plan to get to that point that they can run a 5K without walking. And, and it's a plan. There's apps on your phone, uh, couch to 5K. 
you can get that done. It's just a matter of being committed to it. Now, the third part of the goal setting and the purpose driven is responsibility. <clears throat> How do you become a more responsible person? Well, responsibility and accountability is the same thing. Somebody's going to hold you accountable. If you say that I'm going to I'm going to run a 5K next June, and you tell everybody that's going to help you that, then they'll work with you. But you have to be willing to get it done and to have a plan to get it done. That's purpose driven. You don't become dependable, able for somebody to depend upon you <clears throat> because you have knowledge of what dependability is or you know of a story about dependability. The stories are simply there to help you realize how you can make it. It's just like positive mental attitude. How do you have a positive mental attitude every day? <clears throat> you learn how to respond and not react to circumstances or events. You don't allow things around you to make you negative. <clears throat> you learn to respond to those circumstances and events. This week, when you're looking at the goals, for each goal in each area of your life, <clears throat> and we've got school, family, and personal, and we're on page 76, developingcharacter.org, page 76 of the curriculum. That doesn't mean that you have to write a, a goal for school. You can put a line through school and write something else there, whatever it might be. Weight loss, 5K, conditioning, uh, strength. It, it doesn't matter what it is. It's simply the idea that you're going to have something. Now, in school, if you had a goal for school, I'm going to get eight homework assignments turned in this week. Then there's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Give yourself a plus or a minus. Did you do it? <clears throat> On family, maybe you're going to help your mom with do dishes. Maybe you're going to make your room this week. Maybe you're going to spend an hour with your family. Put the cell phone up and spend an hour with your family. Whatever it might be, give yourself a plus or a minus if you get it done. Be responsible. The quality this week is learner. And the definition is the gaining of knowledge. If you're going to be an exceptional learner, you are a learner for lifetime. It's not just going to school. You become a learner for life. I've told this story before, and it's one of those great stories. You know, as the man told me, the reason that uh, responsibility is such a difficult quality for young people to accept today is they don't see any role models accepting responsibility. The politicians, it's not our fault. It's the other party. That's their fault. It's always somebody else's fault. They don't accept responsibility. You write the goal. You accept responsibility for getting the goal done today. <clears throat> Learner. We learn from the role models that we've seen. As I said before, I, I, the first time I ever spoke at a football clinic, the man sitting on the front row was Hayden Fry. It may not mean a whole lot to some of you, especially you young people. Hayden Fry was, in my opinion, one of the greatest coaches that have ever lived. And for Hayden Fry to sit on the front row of a speech that some young high school coach was going to give, it, it completely shook me up. When it was over, I couldn't wait to go ask him, what are you doing here? Are you in the wrong place? Did you misunderstand who was speaking? He said, Coach, I can learn from every single person. And he told me something I had said that day that he was going to be able to use, which made it a point. I learned that day from him. You never quit learning. I coached for 42 years, and I learned more in my 42nd year than I did in my first because I was a more willing learner. I was going to learn as much as I possibly could. And that's what we're going to work on this week, becoming a good learner, developing the quality of a learner, being a great learner. And we're going to start that tomorrow. See you tomorrow.